What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoos, you are awesome, and today we're going to be talking about False Patch 0.5.1, and uh, I've got Jelly Knees in to help me out with this. He's already did a video, you can check that out on his channel, which will be linked in the video description below, as well as his Twitch channel, and that's why I got him on here. I've been watching his Twitch quite a bit, and uh, you're going to see the two of us together a lot more once Ethereal comes out. So Jelly, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. How are you? Ah, I'm doing... Doing well. So uh, you had a lot of good opinions and you had some differing opinions from me. Um, well, I wouldn't say differing. It's just you approach the game from a different perspective than me. I'm more of a, I guess, a support sort of offlane kind of guy. And you're uh, you're very jungle focused. And I know you play carry a lot as well. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I've been playing carry a lot because it seems to be the most beneficial role for fault right now. But if I had to say what main I am, I would definitely say a jungle main. So, right on. so let's get into this here. Um, Start off with the new avatars. Uh, not much of an update here, just cool new avatars. Looks like Jay Offlane did these. Uh, he has a very particular art style, and that seems to be where they're getting a lot of their art from. It looks like he's doing the art for their um, for the items as well. Oh, is he? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. I mean, he he, de he definitely has a very, like, you can definitely tell that it's his art, so. Uh, let's see. Gameplay. This is a big one. Added sound effects when an enemy hero is revealed by wards. If an enemy is already spotted by another player, the SFX will not trigger. Halle, fucking Luya. We've been asking for pinging wards forever. And I'm glad that they finally put them in. Um, I, I know some people don't like this. Some people don't like that the wards ping because uh, they say that you should pay more attention to the map. I think it's fine for wards in a top-down MOBA not to ping because you have a different perspective on the world. In a third-person MOBA where you're, you know, your field of vision is right in front of you and not over top of walls, I think it's kind of essential that the wards be able to ping and whatever or what have you. What do you think, Jelly? So I come from that top-down perspective, so I understand the feeling of not wanting wards to ping. What I do like about these ward pings is that they're not telling you what location on the map is being pinged. Mm -hmm. It's more of a just a, hey, someone is visible on the map somewhere that you should, you're not expecting. So it's just a check your map more so than it's a, hey, right here on the map kind of deal. And it's a little scary too. Like I, I played a little bit today and I was playing off lane and uh, the, um, the duo lane kept pinging somebody kept entering their their ping radius and i was just like every time like oh, oh somebody coming somebody coming <laughs> we're training people it's the pavlov's response right, <laughs> right? you hear the bell check the map yeah. right like <laughs> that's not i mean it could only be a good thing and then uh um, i agree i think i think it's a very good change for the overall feel of faults being that there's so much you have to manage on top of it even with just your movement as an added factor com in comparison to a top down I think just having a little bit of help with those wards and pinging enemies is very warranted and much needed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then for Boris, they added sound effects to indicate when energy is acquired. Um, this is kind of whatever for me. I mean, it's kind of kind of nice knowing that you're you're picking up that energy. What do you think? I think it's just a quality of life change. Yeah. For me, when I played Boris, I always made sure to check the little number on his E in order to see if I picked up the stack rather than listening for a sound effect. So now it's just a slight change, but it's the same thing basically for me. Right. So I think it's a good change, just makes it easy. And then here's one uh, that you had been calling for on your stream for quite a bit. Grim.exe, he is a stance dancer in, in a fault and the, he has a, his projectiles and energy tube will now change color based on his mode. So the little cable that comes from the gremlin to the uh, to the robot change color and his projectiles change color as well. Great change, I think. What do you, I know you think it's a great change because you were calling for this quite a bit. <laughs> Absolutely. I, it's just easier for both the player and the enemy to know what stance they're in and know what to expect better. And I think just from a counterplace perspective, this is a very good change. So you know what to expect as an enemy laner when you're facing off against a Grim, whether that be offlane Grim, mid Grim, or carry Grim, because they're all going to be built differently and have different aspects or different modes that are better for them. Right. And that that's an interesting point too, that Grim can be played in a lot of different positions right now and built in a lot of different ways as well. But yeah. I'm... And each mode is pretty viable in and of itself. They just do damage in different ways. Yeah. So being able to know what to expect from him is hugely valuable. I haven't gotten to play him yet because I didn't buy the uh, the battle pass, but um, 
I'm about to play him or Decker. I'm kind of sad. But uh, tomorrow I'll be able to play him, which people will probably be viewing this tomorrow. But I was recording this on a Thursday just before the uh, the heroes became available. So I have not played Decker or Grim, which is another reason I have Jelly Knees here because he has. And um, I think yeah. the, the, the biggest thing with this is it's an indication that Strange Matter does listen to the community and make changes based on the community's suggestions. They, of course, don't listen to everything. Well, I, let me <laughs> let me change that. I think they do listen to everything. They just don't always think it's a great idea. I think we need to realize that when we're asking for stuff, just because like I realize that just because I think something is a great idea that not everybody thinks it's a great idea and maybe it's not a great idea. I don't know, but they have listened and made some changes just because they haven't made the specific changes that maybe you individually have asked for. That doesn't mean that they're not, you know, taking it into under consideration at least. Definitely. And I think the Raptor change is the biggest evidence of that because the three Raptors down to one large Raptor and giving a team wide buff rather than just one or two individuals, I think is a huge thing that the community was asking for basically from day one yeah. that they implemented well. And I think for the most part is in a good spot right now. Right on. Now we just got some bug fixes. The login screen music will now play at the correct volume you saved in your settings. I haven't noticed anything with this and daily challenges when I'll reset correctly. I don't fucking pay attention to that either. So like, I don't care. I do like their music. Whoever did their music did a good job. Mm -hmm. The opening music for me has always been way louder than anything else. Oh, really? But I can start, if I sit on that login screen for more than it takes me to press, if I miscorrect my password, it's just going to start screaming in my ears. <laughs> So it's just one of those things. It's like, please, God, get it right the first time. Like, so I'm glad this happened because it was much needed for my sanity. <laughs> okay. So that was a needed change right on. <laughs> Let's see. Items. Warlocks Aegis. Slows will properly break the spell shield now. This is nothing but a good change. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass, Warlocks Aegis. I understand the necessity of it, but it like you would think that a slow would break any, like getting hit by any ability would break that bubble, but... It's not just any ability. The slows weren't actually breaking the bubble. So this is a very good change. Agreed. The fact that soft CC wasn't applying to the shield didn't make any sense because you could hit them with soft CC and then follow up with hard and it would still block the hard and soft at the same time. Yeah. So it was this weird inconsistency. So it's much needed that they did that. I, I know I would be on Narbash seeing a Gideon with the uh, bubble around him thinking, can somebody please... For, for fuck's sake, hit him with something, anything. I don't care if it doesn't deal any damage. Just get that fucking bubble off of him so that when he comes over top, I can actually thunk him and have it do something. Because the end exactly. result is he he, he he ults in the middle of the team and everybody's like, the fuck, Norbash, you know you have a thunk, right? He's like, yeah, I do have a thunk, <laughs> but he had a fucking shield. I couldn't do anything about it. What? Either I break his shield and nothing happens, or you guys break his shield and something happens. Yeah. So we got to figure out a balance here. What's fun, though, is building mana muzzle, thunking a Gideon so he thinks that your thunk is off cooldown, and he jumps over top, and then you just silence his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, let's see. Cast times and delays. We implemented, implemented a new animation system to have gameplay effects line up better with their respective animations. Most abilities were unaffected by the new system, while some proved challenging and bugging buggy uh while we are still working on boris's e ability having an unintentional intentional cast delay all others have been fixed and improved um i think this is one of those underlying things that you probably aren't really going to notice until they fix it um did you notice any big changes here jelly not at all uh, i haven't felt anything and the unintentional delay on boris's e is the one i felt but that's also because i played boris mm -hmm. the most so maybe mains on other people have recognized the changes that they're changing here but i haven't felt anything yeah i haven't there's another one i'm like eh, whatever <laughs> and then boris trying to maul which is his right mouse button while tethered will no longer make the animation jagged and sometimes cause him to fly away <laughs> is this a thing that happened to me several times on stream it's actually <laughs> crazy <laughs> I've done things I got uh, once. It was a jungle Kwong invaded me as Boris, tethered me to the ground, and I flew all the way across map into the enemy team's core. <laughs> no kidding. Like, it was just this like, oh, I'm suddenly here. What's going on? You I don't know what's right happening. Right mouse button, it, it, oh you my yourself into the enemy core. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. 
I didn't know that was a thing. Unintentional Kwong buff, okay? They fixed it. <laughs> they... <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Gideon, fixed auto attack animation. His, I do have noticed that it, Gideon's auto attack animation is a little off. It seems like he like he throws, and then a projectile comes out of his hand like a split second after he actually makes the, the motion. Yeah, it just felt clunky using Gideon's auto attack. You didn't know mm -hmm. where your auto was actually going to hit because the animation was weird. So I'm glad they fixed that. It's easy, yeah, a relatively easy and simple fix that's going to help a lot of Gideon mains out with just farming. I haven't used them since this change, so I don't know how much it affected it, but any change is a good change as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, Grim.exe, his deflect fixed an issue that was causing his shield to not block Countess's feast ability. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a thing. Holy shit. Like that's the, that's one of the major abilities you want to block and it, it wasn't blocking the feast. Have, have you, did you experience that or no? You don't see Countess Only as much a couple anymore times? That, now that she's been a little bit nerfed. Well, yeah, because her Q is just practically useless with the delay that's on it now. So yeah. it's really hard for her to do anything. But yeah, uh, there were a couple of Countesses that I went against in her R. I either would take damage and not receive the CC, or I would receive the CC but not the damage, or I just receive both. Like it was this weird inconsistency mm. going back and forth. Well, I'm glad they fixed that. Uh, Chimera fixed an animation issue with his ultimate causing the suppress status not to work properly. I didn't know this was a thing either because I don't play Chimera ever. Have you noticed any changes here? Do you play Chimera? I played Chimera in the first patch and not much since because Boris has almost Boris or Severog have almost always been a better pick than Kai. Yeah, Kai sucks. I keep telling people that. Yep. And uh, they don't they don't believe me. Um. He's a bully in lower elos, just just like Paragon. He's a bully in lower elos, but once you once somebody understands how to counter him, like just any kind of anti heal at all or any kind of CC in Chimera is fucked, especially in Fault, because his stacks do not like. If you ambush to somebody that's far enough away, your stacks will drop, and you will be right back to <laughs> you're, you're trying to build your health regen again. And Chimera, he needs some love, man. He needs some love. He really does. And it's 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 hurting right now, especially with the buffs to Boris that I know you'll talk about. Yeah, that there there are just all so many jungle options that are better than Chimera, but Chimera is the easiest to pick up out of them all. So when the enemy team has a better jungler and you have a Chimera, there's definitely a divide that you feel in power between the two. Yeah. If you're watching right now and you've been really successful with Chimera, that means that you're just a really good Chimera. Um, he. <laughs> You know, props to you for your skills with Chimera, but he sucks. He's like the only one I would classify as like <laughs> trash tier among all the heroes. Everybody else has some sort of redeeming quality except for Chimera. You're going to get all the Chimera mains in your comments. Just like, no, he's incredible. What are you talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't know, man. It's my opinion. <laughs> Uh, Muriel Alacrity fixed an issue that was causing the ability to give decaying movement speed instead of its intended flat amount. So another bug fix for Muriel that ends up being a buff. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and specifically to, uh, I mean, it's both support and offlane Muriel, but offlane Muriel now just is, keeps getting more oppressive without any changes to help stop it. I, the first time I faced an offlane Muriel and like she would use alacrity to just as soon as she got in trouble she would just use alacrity and fucking boost on out of there and it was so fucking annoying because she was rooting me in place and i was like oh my god this muriel is kicking my ass i need to reassess the situation and fucking back up here <laughs> yeah she's she's Especially crazy because we have mostly we have mostly melee offlaners right mm -hmm. now so when she goes offlane or a carry goes offlane they're just insane at keeping the minions where they want them and pushing anybody else off. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Balance. Melee jump for well for the jungle. Melee minions gold increased from 28 to 35. I did not see this as a necessary change. I the few I don't play jungle much, but the few times I played jungle, I didn't really notice I was that far behind in gold. The, um, you play jungle a lot more than me. Did you think this was a necessary change? Not at all. L absolute zero. Okay. Uh, junglers typically have more XP and more gold than almost anyone else on the map right now. At least at lower elos. I'm definitely seeing that. Um, because they get more XP, so they hit levels faster. 
So they gank faster, they get kills, and then they can take minions from a lane. So it's just, they just steamroll through. It seemed like giving the jungle minions more gold is a weird choice. Mm -hmm. um, supports right now are the, in the most need of gold <laughs> because they're always under leveled and always under farmed. So it's just insane that we would buff the jungle, which has already been so temperamental throughout this the last five patches. Well, you heard it from Jelly. If you're playing a support, um, just go take some jungle from the jungler without asking him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. <laughs> I get carries taking my minions enough. Thank you very much. I don't need supports doing it too. <laughs> and the uh, the Raptor now has 30% physical armor penetration. I think this is a great change. Um, I really like this. It makes him more of a daunting task to take down. Right now, e even still, um, the Raptor is like something that eight minutes, everybody rotate. Like it's just, it's a timed thing as opposed to something where like, okay, we got a few picks. Now let's go take Raptors. It doesn't, it, I think it should be a situational objective, not a timed objective. And I think this helps out with that mm -hmm. because you can't just, it, it's, it's dangerous to go take the Raptors. Absolutely. And Raptor. it's like you said, it's eight minutes and every five minutes after that, the whole team better be on Raptor because if you're not getting it, you're getting put at a severe disadvantage in comparison to the other team. Oh, and yeah. right now with towers being as hard as they are to take early game, this is the objective you need to be on because you can't answer with something else most of the time that equals out into a, at least a neutral gain for both teams. Right. Yeah. And if you're off lane, Greystone's not going to take your fucking tower at eight minutes in. Don't worry about it rotate over and help like just leave the graystone on his own like he's he's not helping his team out you can go help your team out a lot more by helping take that raptor but i mean still it's i, I don't like that it's such a timed thing but oh well so something i, I agree with you 100 percent. something i've been doing off lane to help my team get the raptor but also make sure my lane's in the right position is i've been grabbing a gate scroll for 300 gold mm -hmm. and then using it to teleport across the map for raptor then backing and going back to my lane. That way there's no, there's not a lot of downtime. You're kind of minimizing that level. And the 300 gold for the gate scroll is worth the Raptor to me. Right. If I can help secure that and maybe some kills on the other enemy team, that's going to be a huge advantage for my team rather than me losing 300 gold. If I could pay 300 gold for two favor, I certainly would. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly the point. Is it's Great insane. advice from Jelly. If you push your wave up first, if you push your wave up first, then you can teleport for practically free and get back right as the enemy's hitting your tower. Nice. Very nice. I like that. Uh, let's see. Items. Stealth emblem. Cooldown increased from 270 to 300 seconds, but the ward duration increased from 90 to 120 seconds. So you can't put it, the ward down as often, but it stays up longer. I think it just kind of evens out in the end, yeah? I agree. The one thing I would love to see with stealth emblem changes is that you could have two of them on the map at once. Yes. Because be right nice. now, only being able to have one and they're on a 300 second cooldown each just feels really bad. It's just a weird, I don't know. It's too often do I want to use my wards, but I'm basically being told not to because I can only have one of them out at one time. Right. Yeah. I'm with you there, brother. Let's see. Radiant Pulse. The ping duration, if you don't know what Radiant Pulse is, this was, uh, uh, you can activate it and it'll show you wards so that you can deward. Um, it's really good for junglers to pick up in particular. And this will just give you more time to actually find those wards and destroy them. So I think this is just a good change, especially with uh, wards pinging now. What do you think, Jelly? 100%. Um, I've seen some carries start to take Radiant Pulse now with the increased duration. But because with the emblem and the sight stone that the supports are able to get, the carry can just go out clear wards for the jungler. And then the jungler gets a free gank on in because they know there's no wards. So it's a good, I think it's a good change for junglers and carries as well to give some of that counterplay toward ganking. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Warlock's wears energy penetration per favor reduced from 0.5 to 0.25. This seems like, once again, yet another small nerf to mages in fault. It seems like that, that's been the trend with the last couple of, uh, couple of patches. You got, uh, you got any thoughts on that, Jelly? I think this is way more than warranted. They were getting too much energy penetration for boots, in my opinion. Especially, and that's considering 
favor because raptors are as strong as they are and getting so many favor points is so easy for lack of a better way to put it they're getting easily 15 energy pen from their boots item just because they have them and they're getting raptors and everybody's going to take that's boots. exactly and for 1100 gold getting 15 energy pen plus the movement speed is just insane yeah yeah it was a little overpowered and uh mages have been a little overpowered and fault for a while but uh, that that's definitely changing. That is definitely changing in the pat in the last couple patches. Uh, Mandolin's energy power reduced from 80 to 65. That's quite the uh, reduction there. And favor scaling changed from energy power per favor, one energy power per favor to 25 mana per favor. So mana lens becomes more of a mana stacking item than a uh, than a power stacking item. And I like this change too. Um, it gives gives supports an option to take mana lens if they want to build into blue at all and just increase their mana and um just it, it's called mana lens it needs to have something to do with mana you know what i mean mm -hmm, absolutely and like you said supports this is huge decker who's so mana hungry right now can take a mana lens and be way better off especially with now the fit stacking favor to help subsidize some of that cost on our mana ability so i think this is a great change right on and then energy cell and mana matrix um energy cell energy power increased from 18 to 20 cost increased from 750 to 800 mana matrix energy power increased from 48 to 50 and cost increased from 1550 to 1600 these are just items that led up in the mana lens mana lens right correct yeah it's just adjusting those to make them fit the change with the mana better especially because they lowered the amount of energy power. So they're just giving them a little bit more energy power early, but not letting mana lens stack that up yeah. past that point. And then apocalyptic epitome health threshold increased from 30% to 40% max health. This is a buff to mages. Um, this deals extra damage whenever you have a low health target, extra energy damage whenever there's a low health target. And this goes from 30 to 40%. So somebody only has to be missing 60% of their health now. I can math and uh, that you can be in dealing increased damage to them. Um, I didn't see much call for spending that much gold on Apocalyptic Epitome before, but it might be worth it now. What do you think, Jelly? I think this is really good for the blue people the people running blue items the, the that blue man group. are not bursty. Yeah, the blue man group, you know? Smurfs. But they're Just not bursty. Blue people. So, um, like Gideon and Countess building blue items, this wasn't useful very much because they would already 100 to 0 the person before that. <laughs> yeah. So the gold, the gold to spend for Apocalyptic Epitome was not quite worth it. It helped a little bit, but they were already going to do it anyway. They could get an Arc Amp and make it way better instead. Whereas someone, I've been running this a lot on Grim as a late game item to make his ultimate do more damage because when they're under that amount of health, just giving your ultimate that little chunk extra could be the difference between getting the kill and losing mm -hmm. it. Yeah, very nice. Uh, Cursed Remnant, Tromna duration increased from 3 to 4 seconds and cost decreased from 300 to 2900. The fuck is Cursed Remnant, Jelly? <laughs> Um, Chris Remnant, it, trauma, basically you buy it for the trauma effect. It lowers healing. Okay. So the whole point of it is that you're buying it to counter people like Chimera, people like oh. Greystone, anyone that builds uh, photosynthetic symbiote. This is the item for them because this, this is your equivalent to, if you play League, Grievous Wounds is the, 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 the effect that it applies. Okay. Because it's trying to reduce that healing so they can't in combat keep healing you. You would think I would know that. Uh, I usually just... If I was countering like somebody that healed a lot, I would usually be doing it with like an ADC or a jungler, and I would be picking Jar of Hearts for that. So I never really yeah, that works as well. Up Cursed Remnant. Cursed Remnant, I think, is more for the um, supports or kind of tankier people of your team that do some kind of AOE damage. Mm -hmm. Because if I if I'm taking Greystone and have Cursed Remnant, though, I wouldn't. You shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> But <laughs> it just as an example, because of his Q and it sweeps around, you're applying these trauma stacks to other people or to a whole group of people, lowering the healing across the entire team. So Robe of Miracles is going to do less. Siren's Call for anyone with shields mm. is going to do less. Things like that are going to heal them less over time just as a team rather than just one individual. Okay, right on. 
Uh, let's move on to K Castle. The dash, dash range reduced from 1200 to 1000. Physical power increased from 70 to 75. I look at this as a nerf. I like to use King's Ca or K Castle, King's Castle, whatever the heck you want to call it, in the, the few times that I've played ADC, and I use it for the dash, not the power. Um, I think an increase of five power doesn't make up for the decrease of 200 units of range. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts? I completely agree with you. It's definitely a nerf to K Castle because people bought it for the active more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I personally don't like K Castle. I think it's a very dangerous item. It's it's you're putting yourself in a lot of risk to use this item in most cases mm -hmm. on a carry specifically. On someone like Boris who's going to be tankier or Chimera, the life seal for the dash in is actually going to be very useful because it lets you keep your movement ability for later. Uh -huh. But on carries, it's always been very scary to take this item because you could dash right into an enemy team and put yourself out of position very quickly. Uh, so I think this nerf is more so to keep carries from building it and have them build Vor Steel instead, but keep it on those people that are, can make use of it like Severog, Kai, and Boris. Oh, right on. I never thought of that. I always use it on carries because I live on the edge, man. I live on the edge. <laughs> no, I don't play carry a lot. Plasma Blade, physical power increased from 40 to 50. I think this is a needed buff. The energy, the change from energy to physical damage on Plasma Blade has, uh, you don't see it much anymore. You, you do still see Plasma Blade used, but not nearly as much as it used to be. And it certainly hasn't been first pick item that it, like, like it used to be in the past. So I think this is, I think this is a, a necessary change. I think this will bring Plasma Blade back a little bit to where it used to be. I agree it'll bring it up. I disagree that it was a needed change, though. No, no. Okay. Um, personally, I don't think so. I think Plasma Blade, you, you're you taking Plasma Blade for the effect, the passive effect, more so than the stats. Yes, the stats are a great thing to do, of course. But I think the 40 physical power, the physical power should not be the star of Plasma Blade. The Plasma Blade is meant for the attack speed and the passive. Mm -hmm. Because those are the big star points of that item, at least for me when I play carry. I think this will move it up in a build. So instead of building it like fourth item, I would bring it up to maybe second or third. But I don't think that this would necessarily was a needed change for the item itself. Okay. All right, I'm down with that. Uh, Keen Edge, physical power increased from 30 to 31. Life steal increased from 3% to 5%. Um, Keen Edge just led into a couple of different items, Plasma Blade being one of them. So this just... Uh, kind of, it's kind of, kind of a little bit of another buff to Plasma Blade, yeah? Yep. Keen Edge, Keen Edge does Just lead into Plasma Blade, get a little bit Blade, of that right? power let me, earlier. Let me check that before I have to eat my words. Yes, it does. It does? Okay. All right. Yeah, it's the third item before Plasma Blade. The last okay, one. Okay, right on. And then, uh, Photosynthetic Symbiote. Health regen increased from 0.6 to 1. Um, this is fine, I think. Um... This is the, it's a good item that a lot of people don't use, but um, yeah, that health regen is actually quite nice. And um, I think mm -hmm. an increase to that is pretty good. And this lets the people taking it heal more in fights rather than just out of combat as well. You're making this like the premier healing item rather than just the passive mm -hmm. that's on it. And then Goblin Glue, Acidic Ammo Stacks increased from 4% to 5% Physical Armor Shred. Now, this Armor Shred only applies if they're actually affected by the Goblin Glue, right? No, it applies when they are taking auto attacks from somebody that has the item. Oh, really? So it's a The passive. Goblin Glue just applies three stacks automatically. Oh, okay, right. So the active just applies stacks quickly. So the, gob the Goblin Glue, it's a slow, right? So it's a slow and it applies stacks of the... Of the armor shred? Uh, it's a it it says it's a grounding effect. Yeah. So I think it's just that they can't use dashes or anything like that. It's oh, not necessarily okay. a slow. But then it has that's the active side. Then it has the passive side, which is this armor shred. Okay. I don't know if you could tell, but I've never picked goblin glue. It's a it's a purple. Nobody item. has. Nobody nobody fucks around <laughs> with purple items. I think uh, I think there's some like uh, high level. I think some ADCs do actually pick up goblin glue. Cause it's like a cheap form of armor shred, but I don't know. But it's, it's, it's an effective item. item. It's just hard to justify without the favor points going into yeah. it. That's uh, yeah, that's a lot. That's, that's the story with a lot of things. 
So Jar of Hearts increased pi uh, price from 3,000 to 3,200, added 50 energy armor, reduced physical power from 35 to 30, reduced attack speed from 35 to 20, increased lifesteal from 4% to 5%. So Jar of Hearts uh, no longer as much of an offensive item, now far more of a defensive item. I can see a lot of bruisers using this more so now than, um, I don't know, than a carry. Uh, it, Jar of Hearts also implies, it also applies trauma at one hit, yeah? Uh, I don't know about that one. Let me double check. It does apply trauma. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a great, I, I would usually use this to counter a chimera. If I was playing jungle, I would usually use jar of hearts and I think mm -hmm. I would still use, I would actually value it more now as a jungler when going against somebody that's going to heal a lot, like a Kwong or a chimera, um, with the, the 50 energy armor. Great. Um, it's, it's energy armor is hard to come by. Um, I think this is a great change. Uh, overall, thumbs up for the change to Jar of Hearts. I completely agree. And I think that it's a good... If you're a carry and you're already doing decent damage by your fourth item or even fifth item, and you're just shredding through people, but you just can't stay alive long enough to do that because of the mage on the other team, this could be a great fifth or sixth item for a carry. Because oh, it yeah. gives a lot of good stats for them with the life steal, physical power, and attack speed. But that energy armor... It'll makes it it's like an offensive defensive item it's a very good balance i think for carries that are needing that little bit of life to stay alive and, and finish out the team fight i didn't even think of that great good good stuff good stuff uh exotic belt increased price from 1700 to 1900 added 25 energy armor physical power increased from 19 to 25 attack speed reduced from 35 to 20. uh is this something you built into jar of hearts Yes. I figured. So it just makes believe, that item a Yeah, exotic more belts, again, the final item before Jar of Hearts. Yeah. Uh, matter limiter. I thought this was material limiter for some reason. Faction changed from white to blue. This is the first time we've seen them change a faction on something. I think this makes a lot of sense. Matter limiter, um, it gives a, a slow on ability hit. I used to use it in what I called my Boros aggro build on Greystone, which was white and red. And I would use, I would, you know, his assault was it assault the gates. I think is his spinny whirlwindy attack thing. And it would just every time it would hit a carry, it would slow them down, and it would make it so much easier for me to track them down and kill them. So I'm a little sad to see it change from white to blue, but I do think it was probably a good change because um, it definitely fits the blue sort of persona more than the white. And uh, I think uh, with all the other nerfs coming to mages i think they needed they need need a little little, little ups and uh i think matter limiter changing the blue might be exactly what they need because it does uh it does stack power i do believe whenever with, with favor is that right jelly that's correct and also for people because it's a blue item now someone like gideon gets a double benefit from his ultimate if he has matter limiter mm -hmm. because it applies the slow from the passive and his pull from the ultimate itself on top of that you can make sure that pretty much no one's getting out of that without some kind of extra Where's help. Is he going? Nowhere. <laughs> and then Cosmic Intervention price decreased from 1300 to 1100. Energy Armor decreased from 38 to 35. Is this something that led up to Matter Limiter? Like, I, I don't know these minor, like... I don't know. I don't see that on Matter Limiter's build path, so I'm not sure where this comes from, actually. Try and find this thing. All the... Maybe like these build path a... stuffs are like a blip on my radar. Like I just see them as something to buy in pursuit of my. Yeah, I don't see it at all. Is it a cosmic intervention? It is a neutral item, a unique active entropic burst cleanse and gain movement speed for three seconds. Cooldown is 120 seconds. Oh, it's a cleanse. I didn't even fucking know this existed. <laughs> Nobody knows the neutrals exist. I know, right? We're funding out all sorts of fun stuff here. So I didn't know that's what it was called. I have run this item a couple times on Boris Jungle. Okay. Because when you get stunned on that gank early by a Narbash or something on the carry lane, you just cleanse it and you gain that move speed that they took away from his Q. Yeah. And you can just run straight into lane. Nice. It means absolutely nothing to anybody. Well, I got a... Uh... 
Got a decrease in price, but a decrease in energy armor, so. Cool. I, I, that's something I'll probably pick up and start using now. And it's cheap. For what you're getting for 35 energy armor, 1100 is not that much. Yeah. Plus the cleanse effect on it. Not too. And it's a, It'd be a great a early boost. game and item. And a speed boost. And a speed boost, so. Yep. Good stuff. Uh, aspects. Clairvoyant. Item cooldown reduction increased from 12% to 15%. Uh, great change. Um, items are a lot more powerful than you might think, especially for supports. Like having a an increased cooldown for stuff like um, your robe of miracles or your blessing of the divine, that sort of thing is uh, is really nice to have. And this is just a, a three percent increase to that. So good stuff. Any thoughts, Jelly? Uh, it sounds like a good change to me. Yeah. I don't play almost any support unless I have to, so I've never run Clairvoyant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I don't actually run Clairvoyant either, but whatever. <laughs> Queen, energy power gained per six minion kills reduced from 1.5 to 1. Yet another nerf to mages. Um, I... Oh. This one, you're you're probably not going to notice it early on, but as the game goes by, you're going to notice that you're not, you don't have as much ass behind your abilities as as you used to in Fault. Um, I think, I think people are still going to take Queen. I still think it's better than, I think Queen and Magician are still the uh, the wombo combo of blue aspects, but I don't know. We'll have to see. That and this is that that's a pretty big nerf. Um. And it's one that nerfs late game more than early game. Uh, what do you think, Jelly? I think this will make the most difference in that higher elo play where farm is a lot more consistent. Mm -hmm. Because when they're getting 200, 300 minions by late game, if you're going into a 45 to an hour long game, that's a lot of power that's been lost. Whereas in comparison to low elo, when they're only at 50, min 50 minions at 45 minutes in the game, it's not going to feel as bad. So I think it's going to be very strong up there but not so much felt in the lower areas good call i think it's a good very call. warranted change though very good insight there uh templar armor granted to nearby allies increased from six percent to seven percent i don't think this was needed I, i'm i'm glad it's there as a sport main i really like templar i like keeping my team healthy but i don't really think it needed a boost i think people were already taking it a lot and it was already doing work even though you don't see that work being done really yeah and you took templar over clairvoyant almost every time so then they buff clairvoyant you're like great maybe we'll have a reason to use it and then buff templar right afterwards <laughs> right so it's this weird, like, well, I guess back to Templar. Like, and I also see this as an indirect buff for someone like Steel. Because he's just so tanky all the time that, great, now he has an extra percent he can give to the rest of his team. Just crazy. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Boris oh <laughs> got some huge buffs. What the actual fuck is up with this? They just nerfed him. And I think these buffs make him even more deadly than he was before they nerfed him. Mm -hmm. um, I got a chance to play him today. I, I played him in the off lane, which I normally wouldn't do, but I saw Sock Cap playing him in the uh, solo lane a lot. And I was like, well, maybe it's possible. And my team in the draft was asking, I was going to go Greystone, and my team was asking uh, for me to go something with a bit more burst. So I was like, you know what? Boris has been buffed. Uh, Sock has been playing him solo lane. I would never play him solo lane before, but let's give it a try. Holy fuck. Like, <laughs> I I felt bad for the Greystone I was up against. I felt bad for the entire fucking team we were up against. I was just playing with them. Like, I backed off because I felt bad because I think that's a, that's a big problem with Strange Matter and Fault is, um... I think the community is destroying the game themselves by stacking and just shit stomping people. Um, after that game today, like, like I wanted to back off and like leave these guys alone because I felt like I, I know they probably thought we were stacked. I was not stacked. I was solo queued, but um, I, I went what I called a Hawaiian game. I went 808, which is the area code for Hawaii, but I went eight kills, zero deaths and eight assists. And that's without trying. That's with leaving people the fuck alone and letting them try to, do, you know, play the fucking game. It was insane. Um, okay, so let's go through these real quick. 
The leap distance increased <laughs> his, his mall, his right mouse button. Leap distance increased by from 550 to 650 units to so an entire 100 units worth of range makes a difference. Percent of basic attack damage dealt per swipe while leaping increased from 75, 90, 105, 120, 135 to 90, 105, 120, 135, 150. So just a... A, a, per, a, a percentage increase to his damage increase to his uh, right mouse button and then his E energy required this is the big one energy required to activate each canister reduced from 25 to 20 uh, if 100 energy is present at the time of activation 20 energy is left over after the use jungle buffs now grant or yeah jungle buffs now grant 10 energy instead of 2 and the pickup radius increased from 50 to 450 units that's <laughs> a 400 unit change like, holy shit. Yeah, Jelly, you play him more than me. <laughs> what the fuck is up with this? Why? So, as a Boris main myself, <laughs> I love all of these changes. These are incredible. Please, Strange Matter, give me more. Buff his Q back, please. Well, that, that's all You're I like ask. Call me he's back. fine, he's fine. <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, no, these changes are absolutely insane and were not needed by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Uh, I went into it a little bit on my video and a couple videos prior to that, but they're basically, they've almost reverted Boris to pre-nerf status. Because when he, so what they did when they nerfed him, they nerfed his Q move speed, his Q attack speed, and his base move speed. In patch four, when they did all of the move speed changes, they actually reverted him back to his original move speed without really saying that they did that because I was checking the numbers on it and he actually went straight back to it. So now we've got him, he's moving faster through the lane and that by itself brought Boris kind of back into the jungle as a character because when his nerfs came out, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't nearly as good as he was before. And so that move speed increase helped him have more, as a, more of a presence in the jungle. And then now these come through and he's just gonna dominate. You're gonna have a Boris picked every single game because this is insane. Giving an extra 15% per level on his right click is nuts. The distance increase was almost pretty much unneeded. I never felt like, oh, you know what? My dash was too short. <laughs> uh, that's just weird. And then the changing, I think the biggest part of his E is changing the cost of it from 25 to 20. Yes. Because it, I never felt as Boris that it was hard to get my energy stacks back. That if I used them all on a fight, that it, never, it didn't take me more than a couple minutes to get back to 100 stacks, 80 to 100 stacks. And so now the fact that they're lowering the cost by 5 per stack, so you have an extra 20 if you're sitting at 100, and buffs are giving you 10 instead of 2, that by itself, you're going to have 100 stacks all game, all the time. There's no reason not to if you're playing Boris correctly. Yeah. So it's a very strange thing. And then the pickup radius was just a weird change. <laughs> I'm not sure why that happened at all. Yeah, it's kind of a whatever. But yeah, I totally agree. I think that the, the biggest thing was his change to bare necessities with the like it it has always kind of felt uh strange to me to that for, for that one. Like you, you you spend all the time building up to your E and then you use it and then it's gone. And it was kind of felt like an ultimate. Um when I played him today, I was just fucking popping my E left and right because I didn't give a fuck because I knew I was just gonna get that all that energy back damn near immediately. So it, it, the E felt a lot better to use, but I think they need to decrease the effectiveness of using the canister canisters. I like the way it is now. And I like being able to carry that energy over from the, from the main usage, but they need to, to, to pull back on like the, uh, the, the efficacy of when you use your E with him, because it, it's, it's insane right now. It is insane. Absolutely. And before this, it felt like a choice to use his E. When you're at 80 yes, to 100 stacks, you're like, I, okay, yes. do I use do I use this right now? Is this going to be effective for the fight I'm in? Whereas now with this change, it just feels like, oh, I'll have it back in two minutes. No big deal. It, yeah, that, that's what I'm... Yes, exactly. There's no decision-making process. And when you're granting, you just hit E whenever you're engaging with somebody. Yep. And when you're granting double life steal, extra damage unstoppable and move speed on one ability that's basically on a couple minute cooldown that's not an ultimate ability <laughs> that's insane yeah uh and his right his right mouse button too did so much damage all i had was a pistol but i was clearing um 
uh, ranged minions just with one swipe. And it was mm -hmm. and like I had a, a the Grayson was trying to bully me early, and just all of a sudden he didn't have minions and I, and and I did, and I had full canisters, so I just fucked him up just before before he could do his ult, and there was just nothing he could do about it. And I like I, I felt bad. I felt bad. <laughs> I'm not that good. I'm not good. It was Bankers, you didn't you enjoyed it. you enjoyed me. bullying a Greystone. I did at first until I realized that we were just going <laughs> to shit stomp this team and they were not going to surrender. They that to their credit, they didn't surrender. They you know, we carried through and killed their core, but good for them. And to our credit, we didn't prolong it. We killed the core as soon as possible. Ugh. All right, so moving on to Decker. I don't know anything about this shit because I haven't played Decker yet, but the uh, cast time reduced from 0 0.3125. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> number is that? Cast time reduced from pi to, one, to 0 0.25 seconds. No, I think pi is 3.14. But uh, we'll now do damage to minions. So the bomb, it, it wasn't dealing damage to minions anymore. Wait, 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 wait. Is it exploding on minions now? No, it's okay. not. It still goes through minions, but when it bounces, it does damage oh, okay. on the bounce. No, oh, that's fine then. Yeah, good, good stuff. Because that's what it's that's not what a lot. It's on. just like a little nudge of damage. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. Uh, Ion bought the uh, her slow bubble radius increased from three fifty to three ninety. Eh, a little bit of a boost there. What's your input there, Jelly? I think it's it you feel the difference i noticed after this change you definitely feel like the radius is a little bit bigger but i don't think it's too big a change one way or another i think the ion bot is just a means to an end yeah that wasn't able to accomplish that okay in its original form so this just kind of gives it that little bit of a distance and then that just feels a lot better uh ion fence or uh containment fence or ultimate duration increased from three four five to four five six uh, it's just a buff to her containment defense. Was this needed, Jelly? I don't think so at all. No? To me, five seconds at level three is already an eternity. Mm -hmm. If you trap the right person in her fence, so being basically a carry, right? If you trap the carry in the, her fence and you can't kill them in five seconds, <laughs> six seconds isn't going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> if you're trapping the Severog inside the fence... Yeah, maybe it'll make the difference, but why are you trapping <laughs> Severog inside a fence? Oh my god, I played a game today where three different times as a Narbash, I thunk their Murdoch, our Steel Jungler came in, hit him with the Shield Slam, and then bonked him, and then and then Shield Rushed him, and then I hit him with Crash Bang Boom, the, the, this Murdoch. Our Murdoch couldn't kill him through all oh, of that no. <laughs> and like steel and i are both backing off of the dude so that our carry can get the kill you know like good teammates do and you couldn't seal the deal and then this motherfucker's flaming us like god <laughs> why do i keep getting teams like this sounds like every carry main i've ever met every team i get is like this today let me tell you something i know i'm not that great you will never hear me say oh i keep getting teams like this i'm gonna because i know that the common denominator between all those shitty games is me like <laughs> if you play fucking six games and your team is terrible the only person that was the same one on every team is you so maybe you're the one doing something wrong you should reassess how you're playing because that that's that's how i improve that's how i get better i'm not naturally good at any of these fucking games i just I, I go back, I look at the mistakes I made and try and improve in the next time. I admit to myself that I do make mistakes. I don't think I'm fucking shit hot. And, oh, yeah, that's just, oh, that's one of those things that grinds my gears. It gets, it, it gets my nerves when somebody just blames their team constantly. It's like, dude, if you played 10 games and you fucking lost every one, you're the problem. It's not, it's not the team you're mm -hmm. with. It's, the, it's you. The thing I love about those kind of carries that come into the games is they have like 40 farm 25 minutes into the game. And then they're blaming their team that they can't do anything. It's like, ah, I think there's a difference here. <laughs> yeah, this guy, he wasn't bad. I don't want to fucking flame him too hard. But, like, I wasn't playing top notch. I missed the thunk on a Chimera and ended up getting him killed. But 
Yeah, man, who stalks him? What's what's the guy's name? We're all gonna get your followers in there after the guy in the fault Discord. No, I mean he was being nice too. Like I don't I don't want to flame him too hard. It's just don't fucking blame the team when it's definitely you. I mean if like I said, if you if you're a fucking ADC and you can't kill somebody through a Narbash and a Steel ult, then fucking or name. a Decker a six second Decker <laughs> ult. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's it's not the Decker's fault. <laughs> Oh, uh, back to Decker. I got a little off track there. Ion boosters. Her boots horizontal distance traveled increased from 600 to 750 units. Uh, this is good. Um, it's supposed to. You're supposed to be able to leap up and towards people or up and away from people and do uh, ledge jutes and all that sort of thing. So uh, nothing, nothing but good here, I think. Yeah, absolutely. One of the guys that comes into my stream has been playing Decker basically nonstop since she came out. And he said that the issue a lot of times was those ledges that you could jump over that you got the height for, mm -hmm. you didn't have the forward momentum to get over them. So you oh. would just jump up, look over the edge, and bunny hop <laughs> back down. And so this basically alleviated that. It just gave you that little bit of boost forward to get up on those ledges okay. and do things. Right on. Yeah, that was a big part of playing Decker is using your boost, your, your boost to jump over abilities and then land your stun. Good to see that they're bringing that back in. Uh, Chimera, Berserker Spirit, his E, mana cost reduced from 80, 85, whatever. The mana cost on his, on activating his E was reduced. Who gives a fuck? It's his stacks that's the problem, not the mana. Who, nobody gives a shit about mana on Chimera. He needs help. This is not the help he needs. That's exactly what I said. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. His E feels like a weird thing to use most of the time anyway. Mm -hmm. Because it's great. So I'm in the middle of a fight. I can lose all of my healing to do a little bit more damage, which is great if your team is going to be there to help you get the kill. Because if not, you're just ruining your own chances yeah. with that health regen being gone. It's more beneficial to have the health regen than it is the extra damage. And then activate. You, I mean, you can activate it to immediately grant yourself stacks. But like you mm -hmm. have to activate that when you're right next to them or your stacks are going to drop off by the time you get to them. Like. Yeah, if you try to hit E and then right mouse button, too late. Yep, yep, you're done. The stacks are gone. You might as well <laughs> just not even hit the fucking E. Ugh, poor Chimera. Uh, Kwong getting some much needed nerfs here. He was just, I don't know what the fuck happened with him, but he was just crushing people. Mage, mage build Kwong. Um, his energy power scaling reduced on Judgment of the Heavens from 60 to 30%. A fucking, they cut that shit in half. Uh, cooldown now starts when the sword is picked up or Fury of the Heavens is used. So that's a that's a buff to how many times you can use your judgment and uh, how hard it hits. Um, power of the Heavens, energy power scaling reduced from 70 to 60%. Not as big of a whammy, but still a big whammy. Light of the Heavens is right mouse button. Um, this is when his sword is out. The energy power, power scaling reduced from 60 to 50%, another 10% cut. And Fury of the Heavens, his ultimate energy power scaling reduced from 100 to 90%. So nerfs all around the Kwong. And I do believe they were needed because he was, he was like countessing people. He was like when countess before pre-buffs, like when countess went away, people discovered that building Kwong as full mage, you could just fucking delete people from the game in, with a matter of buttons. It takes a little more skill because you got to land that initial, that initial um, route, but still a very deadly Kwong was um jelly what do you think you think this was needed for Kwong? i think most of it was needed for Kwong. absolutely his q should not be doing as much damage as it is mm -hmm. his q is the conduit for his other abilities so those doing more damage i'm a little more willing because if he misses his q the rest of them are off right right but when his q is doing a quarter of someone's health by <laughs> itself and then you just press your other three buttons at the same time and hope which one's going to get the kill. Yeah. That's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> right. Agreed. Agreed. And I, I really like that cooldown change, actually. Because it's not just a cooldown when he throws it out. He has to physically be on top of it again or grab it and recall it back yeah. to start that cooldown again. So it's not... You can't just spam cues out. Can't throw it out, wait a while, anymore. call it back, and throw it again. Yep. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, Murdoch, Static Trap, his E... 
damage increased um just across the board i'm not going to say the damage numbers but damage of his static trap was increased i think this is great i've encountered some really good murdochs that were very good um as i was engaging into them throwing a trap behind me and then pushing me into that trap and i think great play like that needs to be rewarded and um a lot of times people will just kind of step into the trap just to get rid of them they'll be probably a little more cautious to that now now that they're dealing a bit more damage absolutely i was one of those people that just stepped into traps oh yeah me because too. they didn't do enough damage almost ever for me to feel like it was worth anything and i'd rather just get rid of it take the initial slow when i want it rather than when the murdoch chooses for me to have <laughs> yeah. it uh, oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah the last one this is the one i'm probably the most excited about even though i don't play adc i'm probably going to title this video the rise of sparrow because sparrow got some massive buffs some huge buffs very much needed buffs poor sparrow so, so sparrow in paragon sparrow has always kind of been the embodiment of what i think an adc should be which is kind of weak early game but then like if you if you get her fed if you take care of her you know, late game, she'll she'll blow people out. Fault, it was a little too much like that. Like, oh, God. Like, Spar Sparrow didn't have enough ass to carry a fart until she was, like, three or four items in. And then when she was, like, full build, she was just shitting on everybody. It was like, mm -hmm. there was no in-between. There was no build-up to that. It was just either she sucked or she it was, was just awesome. an on-off switch. Yes. Yes. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people probably did really well with Sparrow. And, you know, I salute you. You're probably really good carries. I went up against Appy Picker and he was on Sparrow. But Appy Picker could Ooh. fucking have half the damage that she has now and still beat me in lane because he's fucking plays all the time, you know, and I barely play carry. So uh, this is another this is another instance of the, the, the hero was weak. And if you did well with her, then that, that's more on your your personal skill than that hero being good. But um. These were very, very much needed changes. I think she's going to be just a force to be reckoned with now. Um, so uh, her arrow shot, her left, or just basic auto attack, uh, her base damage increased from 53 to 57. I know that doesn't sound a lot uh, like a lot, but it, it really is. It's going to stack up. Uh, damage per hero level, so her scaling increased from 3.7 to 4. This is another huge change. She's going to be hitting like a... Like, her fucking left mouse button is going to be hitting, like, a Gideon Cosmic Rift every shot late game. It's going to hurt. <laughs> uh, Hail of Arrows, her Q, which has always been about as useful as my nipples, remains about as useful as my nipples, but it does a little more damage. Now. Oh, no, wait, what is it? What is it? No, 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 yeah, still about as useful as my nipples. It, it, it's just, like, a, a minor damage increase. Our, this needs to do something. Like, in, in, in Paragon, like, it increased her stacks a little bit for her, her passive, but... I don't know, just, it's not enough damage for anybody to really care about. Uh, I haven't really experienced this. The, have you experienced this dealing, like, a, a significantly more damage, her Hail of Arrows, her Q? Her Q does a lot more damage at level Really? One. So it is, At the a, later so level, it doesn't good feel change. huge, because it's per, it's, so it's per tick. It's not just overall. Right. So her Q has, I think it's five ticks throughout the duration. So when you're adding an extra 100 damage... To an ability at level one that's insane so there you go it's finally fucking worth it to cast her q very nice if you can get like a steal to stun somebody and she just drops those arrows on them that's an extra 100 damage that she didn't have to do any work for nice <laughs> and then uh it'll help her out with wave clear when she needs it mm -hmm. uh mark of precision her e uh cooldown decreased uh just across the board uh mana cost decreased across the board um, I think this is really good too. Um, this is a very, a lot of people ignore this, but like you, you activate her E and then you can mark people with, with a basic attack. And, uh, now you can do it more often and this just keeps stacking and it's not going to fall off quite as, uh, quite as fast. Uh, this is just, again, this is going to make Sparrow, Sparrow's early game just a lot better. Um, and then relentless, uh, stack duration increase from one second to two seconds. So again, with goes along with mark marker precision. Uh, Jelly, just what do you, what do you think about these sparrow buffs? I think they're huge. I think they actually will bring her in line, and from what I've seen so far, they have bring her in line with the other carries in the game. Twin blast since his grenade nerf has kind of fallen into Murdoch's place, and they're kind of going neck and neck a little bit. And then Sparrow, I think with these, has stepped into that same position. 
And now they each have their own niche part of carry that they fulfill. Right. Sparrow, if you can land your auto attacks, Sparrow's for you across the board because it, she will do pound for pound more damage than any of the other three, the other two. Um, three, I guess, with Grim. Murdoch, if you're going, if you need a little bit of safety, but also want a little bit more utility, Murdoch's a great pick because that's, that fulfills that niche. You got your global. Twin Blast can be a little more aggressive because he's got his slow grenades and his dash, but also his dash acts as a, a way to step back if you got too aggressive. So I think there's a great balance right now between all of the carries, and I think Grim fits well into that um, with his own kind of niche gameplay. That I think this is a great change for Sparrow and overall going to help out a lot in giving different options. Yeah, right on. Yeah. I, the Boris change not needed. The Sparrow change very, very much needed. I'm, I'm glad to see, even though, like I said, I'm, I'm not an ADC player, but I'm glad to see Sparrow coming back, coming back into her own and uh, reclaiming her rightful place as the queen of the carries. But um, yeah, good stuff, man. Uh... That's that's all of the uh, that's all the stuff here. Yep, that is all everything for patch 0.5.1. They had another patch that came out, but it was just some bug fixes. It doesn't really apply to anything, so we're not really going to discuss that. Um, Jelly overall impressions of this patch. I think it's mostly a step in the right direction. Like I said, the Boris nerf or the Boris buffs are a little bit insane, but for the most part, I think a lot of these changes were very warranted and help the overall balance of the game. We've been seeing that a lot of blue people that build blue items have been oppressive for patches at this point. Mm -hmm. And now that they're, yes, it's been patches of them getting nerfed, but it was first, it was the actual characters themselves. Now it's the items. Now the itemization is going to be slightly more thoughtful, but also just slightly weaker for them in other regards that I think is going to help. Plus the energy armor added to other things gives more counterplay to that. Then we've got the carries in there. I think it's overall just a great patch that they've done some good work for. Right on. Um, I'm just going to say right now, uh, and, and bear in mind that my opinions don't necessarily reflect uh, Jelly's opinions, but I I was very upset by the battle pass shit. Um, I knew I was going to be, and I was, because uh, my one of my problems with a lot of these games is they haven't introduced heroes that I played a lot in Paragon. And as I've mentioned, I need time to get good with somebody. I'm just not, I just can't naturally pick up somebody, come into a game and be great with them. It's not, it's not going to happen. I need time to build up. And, uh, so far they have like, like Richter, I, I was, I was quite comfortable with crunch. I was quite comfortable with the Fae and, uh, Decker was one of the heroes I was very comfortable with. So I was so excited to see her coming into strange matter. And then, come to find out that I, everybody else gets the player for a week before I do. And it just, uh, it, it, was, it was a little soul crushing. It was a little soul crushing. Like, uh, I, I've i been kind of resolved to try and experience Fault from the perspective of somebody that just bought the base package and didn't upgrade at all. Um, I was still, I was, I was seriously considering buying the Battle Pass just so that I could play uh, my girl Decker again, but, uh, COVID-19 hit my business a little harder than I thought it would. I'm not like fucking poor or like hurting or anything, but I do need to consider what I spend my money on. It was my daughter's birthday this month, and I just couldn't justify spending money on the fucking battle pass when like the heroes are going to be free in like a week. So it's cool that those heroes will be free. It's just only a week. It's cool that they'll be free, but it sucked to be just because... Everybody says they're they're creating these games for the Paragon fans and for the fans to enjoy. But then you fucking dangle like one of my favorite heroes in front of me that I can't play. And it's like, who you really, I, I can't play unless I pay for him. Who the fuck are you really creating the game for then? Who are you really creating the game for then? Um, I, I love Strange Matter. I think they, they, they really listen to the community a lot, but they need to stop with these fucking super aggressive monetization policies so early on into the game. If you want to make money, make some great skins better than that fucking sunglasses, glasses, Kwong bullshit and charge for that. That's, that's my opinion there, but, uh, that I actually agree with you. I, I paid for the battle pass, um, partly so I could get the early access to the heroes because it just to me. I was able to justify that for myself. However, I think 
I mean, you said it best. The aggressive monetization on, on, on all of this stuff is insane. Um, it's like AAA the, fucking prices on, 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 for fault. Absolutely. Well, and to have a battle pass that, for the most part, the only thing you're getting for the battle pass, right now at least, because the skins haven't come out for Grim or Decker, is the avatar, slightly reduced prices in the shop, and um, the early access to the characters. Most of the people in the shop aren't going to notice the price differences. They weren't enough to just to significantly alter the blue matter cost for anything. If uh, you could spend coins on the game, so great, you can you can you get a little bit of reduction on that. But the way I recently figured this out, actually, the way that it's set up in the reduction, I still have to buy the higher amount of coins to buy something rather than being oh, able to buy if, I, if okay, it's a yeah. five dollar pack of coins. I still, the skin costs six and a half dollars. So I now have to buy the $10 pack of coins. You just have more left buy the left six over. and a half dollar skin. Yep. And it leaves left over. So now I have to buy again in order to afford a skin. Insidious. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I just, I wanted to get that off my chest. That's been pissing me off all week. <laughs> so I think that's, I think tomorrow. that's going to. Tomorrow you yeah, can do yeah, it. I'll get the, I'll get the player tomorrow. Um, that's going to wrap this up, folks. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you enjoy seeing Jelly and I together because you're going to see a lot more of us when Ethereal comes out. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I, I actually enjoyed this little conversation. What do you um, you want to do this like once a week, Jelly? Just get together and fucking talk about some shit? I'm down. That sounds great. Yeah, that'd be cool. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, man. Um, <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, hit that like button and subscribe. Go check out Jelly's Twitch channel. You'll probably see me in there watching him Twitch. Uh, see a, a Twitch, watching him stream. See a Thieves, Fault, League of Legends, uh, Smite, anything else? Marbles, Among Us. Mhm. Mm I can pretty much go around the block here on on Twitch, but <laughs> lots of Fault. And the more patches that come out, the more I've been like wanting to play Fault. So it's. It's been really good over there. Right on. That's all for now, folks. You guys have a good one. Man, goo.